In the aftermath of the massive landslide in the Bluten region of Switzerland, concerns are mounting once more as a new lake begins to form. Not where the previously submerged part of the village lies but much higher, within the basin of the now-vanished Burge Glacier. The glacier once anchored to the Kleinonis mountain was torn away when the peak fractured and collapsed, creating a sprawling debris field more than 2 kilometers long and up to 90 meters deep in some areas. Churches, homes and remnants of the community lie buried beneath this massive deposit. Despite the initial destruction, the mountain continues to shift. Geologists monitoring the site have confirmed significant ongoing movement, particularly near the summit of Kleinonest, where hundreds of thousands of cubic meters of rock remain unstable. The Canton of Valais recently issued a stark warning, the risk of further collapse is still extremely high. Amid the geological chaos a deeper human tragedy unfolds. A 64-year-old shepherd remains missing, presumed lost somewhere within the devastation. While the public prosecutor has formally opened an investigation into his disappearance, proceedings have so far been initiated against an unknown individual. According to a professor of geology involved in the case, the loss may have stemmed from a miscalculation, an error, in estimating either the landslide scope or its imminent danger. Meanwhile, new hazards are forming, with the glacier gone, fresh rockfalls are landing in its former location, and meltwater is accumulating in the hollowed-out basin, forming a precarious alpine lake. Weather forecasts predict heavy rainfall and thunderstorms, heightening the threat that this high-altitude lake could break loose. The corridor above the basin still holds roughly 300,000 cubic meters of loose debris, and authorities have not ruled out the possibility of a catastrophic debris flow. For now, rescue and research efforts on the unstable debris cone are restricted. Glacier remnants embedded deep within the rubble are still slowly melting, creating the risk of hidden sinkholes and sudden collapses. Additionally, the river Lanza, which now cuts through the debris field, poses a serious threat. As it continues to erode the base, large sections of the cone could be swept away without warning. Access to the site remains impossible, especially with the use of heavy machinery or excavators, due to the unstable terrain. The risk is twofold, emanating both from the debris cone below and the weakened slopes above. The glacier region remains a major concern, but so does the opposite side of the valley. When the initial landslide struck, its force was so great that it propelled debris across the valley, nearly engulfing a small village. That same unstable mass, unconsolidated and precarious, poses a renewed threat, particularly in the event of heavy rainfall, which could trigger additional downslope movement. Authorities have since issued an update concerning the debris cone located on the valley floor. The Lanza River has formed a lake behind the obstruction, and water from this reservoir has carved channels through the debris cone, continuing to flow since Friday. However, this water is laden with sediment and debris, evident in its brown coloration, rendering it unsuitable for use by the turbines at the Feden Reservoir. As a result, electricity generation from that dam has ceased. To manage the water accumulation, officials partially opened the reservoir's bottom outlet Friday evening, directing flow toward the Runa River. There is a small but meaningful development for the communities downstream, specifically Faden, Kippel and Vila, whose residents had been evacuated. They are now being granted brief 30-minute visits to their homes. While the time is limited due to ongoing safety risks, it allows them to collect essential items such as documents or medication, and, if they choose, water their plants. It may seem trivial from the outside, but under such stress, personal priorities often take on profound emotional significance. Access will be carefully regulated, aligned with the municipal office hours to ensure all individuals are accounted for and vacate safely within the allotted time. Meanwhile, the search continues for the one person still unaccounted for in the disaster, a shepherd believed to have been in the area when the slide occurred. On Monday, search teams returned to the landslide zone, focusing efforts on a clearly demarcated section of the debris cone. At 12.30 p.m., helicopters transported trained units, including mountain specialists, search dogs and personnel from the Cantonal Police and Valet Rescue Organization to the scene. An excavator was also deployed, despite the high risk involved. Firefighters and military personnel on site are maintaining constant oversight of the operation. Tragically, new evidence may offer insight into why the shepherd remains missing, deepening the emotional weight of an already devastating event. No individual or group can be held solely responsible for the tragedy that unfolded. 
authorities, scientists and local communities collaborated diligently, taking proactive measures that safeguarded nearly all lives. Warnings had been issued regarding potential landslide activity, and contingency plans were in place. However, this event defied precedent. Experts described it as something unseen in living memory, a disaster of millennial scale, not just a century. A colossal glacier detached, dragging with it vast amounts of rock and ice into the valley below. This overwhelming collapse led to a significant underestimation of its potential impact. While specialists had calculated various scenarios, including worst-case projections, the magnitude of the actual event far exceeded expectations. The resulting debris surged beyond the designated evacuation zone, spreading across the valley floor and even climbing its opposite slopes. In the aftermath, one man remains unaccounted for a 64-year-old shepherd named Tony. His disappearance highlights a painful detail. The exclusion zone, thought to be sufficient, did not cover the area where he lived and kept his animals. His stable lay roughly 300 meters beyond the official boundary. Though seemingly a small distance, it proved critical. Like many in his profession, Tony chose not to abandon his flock, staying behind to care for them. Satellite imagery now reveals the full extent of the devastation. The debris field extends thousands of feet further than initially predicted, even reaching areas southwest of the designated danger zone. This has prompted renewed scrutiny into the modeling and risk assessments used beforehand. Professor Valta Vildi, a respected geologist from the University of Geneva, has shed light on a crucial oversight. The event was initially understood to be a landslide. In reality, it was a glacier collapse, an entirely different geological process, one far more volatile and difficult to forecast. This misclassification led to critical miscalculations in the projected path and volume of debris. According to his observations, the mass of ice and rock plummeted from the mountain, rebounded off a ridge, and then spread out in a far wider arc than initially projected. This resulted in a debris cone that extended well beyond the designated evacuation zone, ultimately much larger than anyone had calculated. In one particularly tragic instance, the estimation for the safe boundary fell short by about 300 meters, roughly 10% of the total 2.5 kilometers length of the debris field, a number that has since been revised to an even longer span. The professor underscored that this wasn't a case of negligence or blame, but rather a reflection of the scientific community's limited experience with glacier collapse phenomena. Unlike landslides where trajectory models can offer relatively accurate projections based on rock properties and fall angles, glaciers present a far greater challenge. Their internal structure, buried beneath layers of ice, remains largely invisible, making it extremely difficult to model their potential movements. The Bluton Glacier, classified as a hanging glacier, was precariously anchored to a steep mountainside, lacking the broad, stable base that characterizes other glacier formations. Over time, pressure mounted as a fractured mountaintop exerted increasing weight upon the ice, ultimately triggering a cascading collapse. Despite having outlined various scenarios, including partial and full glacier failure, the experts had no precedent or comprehensive model that accounted for such a large, mixed-mass movement, an avalanche of both glacial ice and fractured mountain rock. The professor concluded that, with current scientific knowledge, no individual or expert team can be faulted for underestimating the threat. What occurred was a stark reminder of nature's unpredictability. He acknowledged that the authorities acted swiftly and effectively, saving many lives, and had they known the full extent of the potential danger, the evacuation zone would undoubtedly have been expanded, yet in the end, it was nature, not human error, that dictated the outcome. According to the expert, evacuation zones are typically calculated with a wide safety margin. That protocol was followed in this case as well, which allowed many lives to be safeguarded. In the context of past disasters where large numbers of casualties were recorded, this is considered a significant achievement. However, the situation in Blatton revealed a critical flaw, the designated evacuation area turned out to be insufficiently large. This miscalculation may have contributed to the disappearance of at least one person, a loss the expert described as tragic, noting that even a single victim is one too many. Reflecting on previous catastrophes, he pointed to the 2017 Bondo landslide, which claimed eight lives, and the 1881 disaster in Elm, where over a hundred people perished. Though comparing modern incidents to those from centuries past may seem imbalanced, especially given the lack of technology at the time, the devastation remains undeniable. 
the catastrophic event in Goldau Schwitz in 1806, where more than 500 lives were lost, highlights the enormous strides made in geological monitoring and early warning systems today. Modern methods have drastically improved response capabilities and in many cases, have made the difference between life and death. Still, despite technological progress, the incident has prompted legal scrutiny. The public prosecutor in Valais has launched a formal investigation to understand why certain areas, including a barn, were not evacuated, and why a local farmer was allowed to return to tend to his animals. An inquiry has been opened against an unidentified individual to establish the circumstances behind the shepherd's disappearance. This echoes another case from the previous year involving a deadly landslide where similar procedural questions were raised. Valet Attorney General Beatrice Pont confirmed that as each day passes without new information, the likelihood that the disappearance will end in a fatality grows. Should that be the outcome, she emphasized the importance of providing the family with a clear account of what occurred. Investigators aimed to determine whether the individual had ignored official directives or was in a zone still deemed accessible at the time. The investigation seeks not to assign blame hastily but to learn from an extraordinary event that defied prediction. No precedent exists for what unfolded. Current data indicates that the debris cone, rising over 100 meters high in places, has shown no signs of further cracking or collapse, at least for now. However, scientists warn that this could change as glacial ice embedded within the rubble begins to melt. With an estimated 6 million cubic meters of rock and debris, and an additional 3 million cubic meters of ice, the onset of melting could trigger dangerous mud flows. Experts remain cautiously optimistic that the dam located in Fiden, further down the valley, would be capable of withstanding a potential mud flow of the magnitude suggested by recent simulations. However, uncertainties remain. Simulations have also been conducted regarding the possible collapse of the glacier, revealing that the most significant danger arises if multiple events were to occur simultaneously. In such a scenario, evacuation of villages such as Ghoul, situated deep in the valley along the Rona River, could become necessary. Complicating matters is the recent discovery of a new glacial lake forming at the summit, adding further instability to an already precarious situation. The mountain continues to shift, dislodging rocks and debris, and now heavy rainfall is forecasted. These converging factors raise concerns that a cascade of natural hazards could be triggered. On the opposite slope, loose material has accumulated to a depth of nearly 30 feet, an enormous mass, highly unstable, and vulnerable to further movement if precipitation increases. Meanwhile, across the region, volcanic activity has also stirred alarm. A recent eruption at Mount Etna drew tourists dangerously close to an unexpectedly violent explosion, evoking comparisons to past near-catastrophic events. The proximity of bystanders during the blast was harrowing enough to induce a visceral reaction from those witnessing the event. These natural systems, mountains, glaciers, volcanoes are in dynamic motion, and the communities that live among them remain vigilant. The unfolding developments will continue to be closely monitored by geologists and local authorities as they assess risks and prepare for potential emergency responses. If you found this update helpful or eye-opening, please take a moment to like the video, share it with others who might be interested, and subscribe to the channel for future updates. Your support helps keep this important information flowing. Stay safe, stay curious, and until next time, take care.